Good morning, everyone. I'm Macarena Segal. I'm a member of the staff of LACNIC, and I'll be the master of ceremonies in this event. Welcome to LACNIC 33, our first online event. I want to thank the over 100 participants for being connected and for joining us in this briefing session for LACNIC members and uh, its community. We would have liked to share this event with all of you, as was the plan in Cali, Colombia. Given the current circumstances, we can't do that, but we hope you're going through this global health emergency the best way possible. It's an honor for LACNIC to count with your participation along this week. The objective of this online event is to maintain the spirit of the in-person events. Hence, we invite you to participate in the various sessions and tutorials, to download the app so you can do networking with the rest of the attendees, and to follow the hashtag LACNIC33 in the social media. Before going on, I would like to tell you that we'll record the session, so anyone who's interested may be able to see it uh, again later. As to the dynamics of the session, let me tell you that the microphone will not be open to participants. If you have any questions as to the contents of a presentation, please send them through the Q&A panel. If you wish to make rather general comments or comments on logistics, we ask you to please do it through the chat. The questions will be answered at the end of each block. That is, after Laura Kaplan and Vadna Maya finish the presentations. However, we invite you to write down your questions while you listen to the presentation, mentioning your name and organization. Remember that you may ask questions in English, Spanish or Portuguese. Questions will be read both in the original language and in the speaker's language, so that everyone, including the person asking the question, may understand it. We kindly remember that you may ask your questions in English, Spanish or Portuguese. Questions will be read both in the original language and in that of the speaker, so that uh, all participants, including the person who asked the questions, may understand properly. Trying to reach as many participants as possible and as a tool to support the better understanding of the presentations We'll be providing simultaneous transcription of the presentations in three languages, Spanish, English and Portuguese. To see the live transcript, you must go to the event website and look for the language of your choice in the simultaneous transcription menu. Uh, she's repeating this same message uh, in English. So we'll be providing simultaneous transcription of this session in three languages, Spanish, English and Portuguese. To see the live transcript, you must go to the event website and look for the language of your choice in the simultaneous transcription menu. Now, we would like to introduce the staff of LACNIC that, one way or the other, will be providing support in this session. Giovanna Butteri will be our session secretary. She will be in charge of managing time and the participants' questions and then forwarding them to the speaker. We ask the speakers to please pay attention to the messages Giovanna will say out loud to take your time. The team of operators will give us a Uh, with a different technical and audiovisual issues. And if I were to have any trouble with my connection, Paolo Otegi will take over as Master of Ceremony. The rest of the staff will be, as always, available to assist us on uh, a number of issues. You will be able to detect us as uh, members of LACNIC in the chat. Now, finally, we will start this briefing session for LACNIC members and community. The aim is to share a report on the activities completed in 2019, as well as the financial support that was usually presented at the annual assembly held at the May event. It's important to highlight that this instance does not replace the assembly, which, as many of you are aware, has been put off. We now give the floor to Laura Kaplan, Development and Cooperation Manager at LACNIC. She will tell us about the various initiatives LACNIC has worked on in recent months, targeting the entire extended community and not just LACNIC members. You have the floor, Laura. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Macarena. I am Laura Kaplan, the manager of the Development and Cooperation Area, and I'm going to share with you a presentation on some of the actions that we have undertaken with the LACNIC community throughout 2019. Let me share the presentation.
Please, Marka, can you confirm that you can see the slide? Yes, Laura, we can see it well. Excellent. Thank you. Well, this is a report of some of the actions that we have been conducting with the LACNIC community in recent months. The first thing I want to tell you is that LACNIC's uh, development and uh, uh, cooperation uh, area works uh, mainly on the Dimension Clients community. As you may see, this dimension encompasses not just our members, but also our larger community, and it is focused on those projects, actions, and initiatives aimed at strengthening, engaging, and constructing of uh, the uh, LACNIC community and all the participation spaces. As I said at the beginning, today I bring you a summary of some of the activities that we implemented with and for you during 2019. These three items are just uh, an example of some actions that I will describe one by one as we move along in the presentation. The first thing I'd like to tell you about is that we have been working uh, in the identification of barriers that prevent the participation of technical women. Many of you may have noticed that in our events, the participation of technical women is rather low. We have evaluated the issue and we have worked uh, in research with the community, both men and women, who helped us identify what types of barriers these women are facing uh, that prevent them from participating in LACNIC's events. So it was thanks to that research that we managed to understand uh, and organize them at four levels. That's what you see on the screen. And we could separate some issues that have to do with an individual level, including uh, issues related to insecurity or, or lack of self-confidence. The second level of barriers has to do with domestic issues, responsibilities, caring for others, home-related issues. The third level has to do with employers, or rather, at the professional level where I developed my career. And the fourth level has to do with some dynamics observed at our events. This order uh, and this information enabled us to understand and develop initiatives where LACNIC may have a positive impact to allow women to have a fuller participation so they can overcome those barriers that we understand are there. Sorry, I can't go any further with my slides. There. So, thanks to that information and understanding how LACNIC could act, we developed three initiatives that we implemented during 2019. The first initiative seeks to act on that individual level that I just mentioned. It consisted of relaunching the IT women's space at our events. During LACNIC 32 in Panama, we organized a workshop for which we received the support of Google.com for leadership issues. This enabled us to work on the capacity building and leadership issues. We held an open activity both for men and women. The second issue that we addressed was the domestic level. It consisted in implementing the nursery at our events for children care. Both in uh, LACNIC 31 and LACNIC 32, we offered a nursery so that uh, both fathers and mothers can uh, take their children to the event, make sure they are well taken care of, and be able to uh, follow all the sessions. The third action had more to do with the internal dynamics at our events. This included the design and launching of LACNIC's Community Code of Conduct. The Code of Conduct was approved and entered into force at LACNIC 32, and it is currently in force for all the spaces of participation at LACNIC to ensure that everyone can have a full participation and so we may achieve a good diversity and involvement of all the people in the community. The next topic I wanted to uh, tell you about has to do with the FRIDA program. 
Although Frida has been around for over 16 years, operating as a program within LACNIC, we have geared our efforts to reconstruct or restructure some access we were already working at to favor the harder technical community. The FRIDA program has historically given financial support to issues like open and free internet, internet access, and although we we plan to maintain those topics under FRIDA, we are happy to tell you that uh, for this year's call we launched a new theme, that is internet security and stability. It will be, f- and it will fund projects aimed at strengthening. Um, internet security, resilience, interconnection, and network operations. The objective of all this is to be able to incorporate in the programs that we fund and support through the FRIDA program projects that address these specific areas while we continue to work with some of the other topics, uh, including community issues, which uh, are also important and we have supported for many years already. For those of you who don't know it, FRIDA is a fund for strengthening the Internet in Latin America and the Caribbean. What we provide through FRIDA is grants and prizes for these three areas on the screen. The call for projects uh, will be open until May 22nd. And please notice that during the event, LACNIC's booth is open, offering much more information on how to apply, what the processes are like, what type of organizations can apply to each fund, at what stages, etc. You will also hear announcements at the beginning and closure of some of the sessions, so pay attention because there are many funding opportunities for this year. The last thing I want to tell you about is that... uh, This book is now available. It has been published. It's the development of the LACNIC community. This work was developed jointly with ICON, the Internet Society, LAC, uh, LAC TLD, and LACNIC. What, uh, the intention of, of the book was to depict the regional and global challenges experienced during, during the inception of LACNIC and the consolidation of its community. It is not meant to be a chronological account. It is rather a set of uh, memories uh, and uh, interviews to over 45 key players in the community who tell us about those challenges and how it all gave rise to what we know today. It also offers some perspectives of how things may evolve in the future. So we invite you all uh, to read it. It's available at LACNIC's uh, website, posted just uh, as you see it here in chapters. And we invite some of the people involved in the book that are part of that history. But also, we also advise some new people that play a role in the community. It may help you understand those challenges and understand a bit more about our history. With this, we finish our report on the actions implemented with the LACNIC community in 2019. I wish to thank you for participating and I hope you really enjoy LACNIC 33 and I'll be paying close attention to any comments and questions after the next presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. As you very well said, the questions will be left uh, for uh, after the next presentation. Occasionally, we receive questions on the type of activities regularly performed by the board. That is why, at LACNIC, we thought it would be pertinent to present a summary of the activities implemented by the board throughout the year. To that aim, we invite Varna Maya, president of uh, the board, who will present that report. You have the floor, Maya. Hello, good morning everybody. I'm Wardna Maya. I'm a member of uh, the board of LACNIC and I'm currently the president. Thank you all for uh, participating in this uh, online event. We hope you are all going through this difficult situation the best way possible. Of course, we would like to be present in person to hold our traditional meeting to meet all our friends, to meet all the community and its members. But as that is not possible, we'll try to make this uh, online event as good as it can get. Yesterday, 
We were very pleasantly surprised to see a significant audience at uh, the IPv6 tutorials, and we hope these figures will be just as good for all the other activities that we will have uh, at uh, this uh, LACNIC 33. As we were planning the Cali meeting, we decided to create this session to discuss the operations, communications, and activities of the board. And this document, this presentation, is precisely what I'm going to uh, share with you. So let me now share my presentation. Maya, we confirm that we see the presentation. Yes, thank you. In this report, we will mainly talk about the structure of the board, the way it operates, the way it communicates, uh, how many monthly meetings we have, uh, how many annual meetings, and uh, what those meetings are like and uh, all the inf related information. We're also going to present some documents that uh, are developed by the board and uh, the guidelines for 2019, the most important and relevant resolutions and uh, other affairs and issues that uh, the board addressed in 2019. So let's start with uh, the way, the structure of the board, its committees and other bodies. As you already know, the board has uh, seven members that are elected by the uh, uh, LACNIC members. And uh, here, these uh, members of the board uh, are nominated with uh, the respective positions. That is, the, the, the positions are distributed internally. It's not a, a direct election. Every year, we redistribute uh, the positions. Here, too, you have the country of origin of uh, the various directors. Remember that uh, there are limits for participation not more than two for each country, and also there's a maximum limit. There should be no more than one per organization. There are compatibility rules and a number of restrictions intended to make the board a group of with a range of different people with a, a good uh, uh, representation in the region. The mandate, the term, is it's a three-year term, and the uh, directors rotate. We have elections every year. There are years uh, where we elect two members of the board, and another year that uh, we replace three members to complete the series. And we also have the internal committees, such as the investment committee, the Ethics Committee, and the Risks Committee. Each director distributes uh, his, uh, her participation in the different uh, committees, as well as the representative of the, uh, of the board uh, before our NOEC, as ASOAC, and also as juror of the Lifetime Achievement Award. There's also an executive director that, who is hired and who participates and all, in all the uh, meeting boards. Uh, he has rights equivalent to those of a director, but with no right to vote. 
Concerning the operations of the board, uh, what is its routine? Well, initially, the main form that the members communicate with is uh, through uh, the mailing list. There's a couple of mailing lists for all the board, and there are also separate lists for the committees. And, of course, there's a more informal group in WhatsApp for exchanging quick messages. But the official decision uh, form uh, when uh, there's some uh, online voting... It's uh, the official uh, way of doing it is through the mailing lists. There are virtual meetings every month. That is, we have monthly meetings, and in 2019, we had nine meetings, each of which lasted two hours in January, February, March, April, June, July, August, September, and November. Likewise, we have in person meetings, face to face, that typically occur in uh, LACNIC events. Last year it was in May, LACNIC 31, and in October, LACNIC 32, and in December, in Montevideo. The internal committees are created to uh, discuss uh, in detail issues such as investment and finances and uh, as risk committee. And uh, the output of these meetings. It's very important to remember that uh, the output is publicly available because transparency is uh, a key value uh, for LACNIC and uh, the board and the staff uh, works hard to facilitate the access uh, to the community and to anybody interested in obtaining uh, relevant information uh, for the organization. On our website we have the transparency part and uh, if we access uh, that uh, transparency section we are going to see a lot of important contents. The uh, most important uh, documents as well as our board meetings. Here you can see, for instance, the 12 uh, meetings, nine of which were virtual and three were in person and the respective minutes, as well as uh, uh, the information as to whether the uh, members of the board were absent or present. It's all uh, quite transparent here. Now, on the documents and the guidelines uh, of the board, an important role of the board is uh, to create a number of documents uh, to support uh, LACNIC's activities. This time and effort of the board are aimed at uh, ensuring spaces for uh, participation of LACNIC that may be inclusive, uh, uh, in, uh, that in integrate people that are secure and that favor the exchange of uh, broad and diverse ideas. In 2019, we created the following documents on policies and guidelines in coordination with the staff and the community. The definition and uh, the uh, operation of the board's committees the transparency guidelines and uh, the code of conduct of a LACNIC community. Likewise, we updated several policies and guidelines that had been created in uh, earlier years, including the code of ethics, the uh, operating reserve policy, the process for risk administration and management in the portfolio of investment, the policy of uh, um, uh, travels of the board and uh, travels of the other commissions and the members of uh, ASOAC, procedures for distribution, the uh, positions at the board, uh, the election of representatives of the board in ASOAC, process of electronic vote in the board, and the process for exoneration of uh, quotas of our members. On the resolutions, and the most important resolutions of the board in 2019, many of them are recurrent resolutions. And 
and early in the year in January, we decide the positions in the board. We decide the committee and other representations. We defined the timetable for the board meetings. We approved the annual electoral calendar, and in February. After a lot of discussion, a lot of uh, um, exchange of ideas, we approved the objectives of the executive director. We also approved uh, the call for an ordinary assembly. We approved uh, the annual financial report and in June we ratified uh, the proposals for policies like 2019-1 that was the policy the policy for the transfer of uh, IPv4 resources into RIRs and like uh, 2018 seven clarifications of sub assignment other important resolutions the approval of recommendations of the electoral committee on adjustments to ele uh, electoral processes, the restructuring of uh, the Lifetime Achievements Award, and the approval of uh, uh, exemption requests, two approvals, approval and sign of credentials, and appeal to um, the uh, process of the uh, policy LACNIC 2018-3. This was the first time that uh, after after moving the PDP, the uh, board has the role of analyzing potential appeals. And for the first time, uh, the board was uh, um, acted to uh, appeal this uh, policy process. Some other resolutions that were broadly debated at the board resulted in documents with the positioning of LACNIC on the blockade of internet sites, that is in that link, and the stance of uh, the board to accelerate the deployment of IPv6 in our region. Other um, uh, Information uh, themes uh, discussed at the board in 2019 are th themes that are more relevant that the staff presents the board. It's the financial reports and reports on uh, the quarterly investment, the uh, reports of the audits and the visits of the fiscal commi committee, the um, feedback of each event of LACNIC, the reports uh, uh, the monitoring reports of the op uh, operation plan, the report of risks, and uh, the report of several operative areas in LACNIC. I want to, to clearly say that these reports that are developed by the staff are uh, of such a good quality, such a professional quality, that all the reports are full of very important details, so it's it makes the the work of the board uh, very straightforward uh, it's very uh simple simple to be able to analyze the data so my congratulations to all the staff and all the people involved the coordinator that is uh, our executive uh, director but we've noticed that in recent years we have reached a level of a professionalism that is Huge, very important. Now, on other topics and events, one of uh, the concerns of the board is uh, the uh, ongoing revision and uh, the constant uh, oversight of uh, the bylaws of LACNIC, uh, adapting it as necessary to update and to maintain our main document that is our our bylaws in line with the present days we work and we prepare the themes that will be presented at the assembly the following year the board 
also gets involved in supporting the staff on a range of topics such as identifying and approaching potential hosts for the annual event, to bring potential sponsors for the events and to accompany the staff of the area in high level meetings with uh, corporation project funders. As uh, in closing, I want to mention that some, some events uh, that uh, the board participated in uh, in the name of LACNIC, such as accompanying the visit of the Fiscal Commission, the uh, celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Internet in LACNIC, in the uh, House of Internet, and, the part, and participating uh, in a presidential breakfast here in Uruguay. Good. This is a brief report of the activities that I hope that may help understand what the Board of LACNIC does. And finally, I'd like to mention and to thank all my colleagues at the Board for their dedication, for the patience, but essentially for the constant uh, search for consensus. Ever since uh, I'm in the board, all the decisions, all of them have been through consensus. They are often very lengthy processes with a lot of debate. These are processes that uh, very often are exhausting, but at the end, they result in good things that are well structured. So I believe that an organization like LACNIC must uh, direct its decisions and its uh, governance documents. Thank you. And I am ready to answer any questions, either today on, online or via email. It will be a pleasure to be able to answer any question from the community. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. It's been a very a thorough, comprehensive uh, report of the activities. Although LACNIC is a technical organization, as you heard, the board uh, uh, works with very general topics, not just technical topics. So, so we have several minutes for questions before the break. Giovanna, could you share the questions uh, to the speakers? Yes, Macarena, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Yes, we have a, a question here for Laura Kaplan from Mr. John Hiro, and uh, it, it goes as follows. Um, is the FRIDA program only for organizations or uh, can a freelance person uh, create uh, a team and uh, send a proposal and participate? Thank you for your answer. The answer Look, thank you for the question. The answer is, you. it's not possible for individuals to apply, but uh, you may have just working groups and organizations. You don't need to be a legal person. You can put a, a working group together and uh, apply with a proposal. Anyway, I want to give you uh, my email so that you can send uh, any questions you may have. It's... Uh, Frida at lacnic.net. So I'll leave it there. Thank you, Laura. Giovanna, are there any other questions? Uh, we don't have any. Oh, yes. Now we just received uh, a new question. It's uh, Mr. Jorge Abram. The question is, I work at the university. Today, half our students are not connected. How can we present a project from the university? Uh, I don't clearly understand. Is the question projects for FRIDA program? Yes, FRIDA projects. It's confirmed by Jorge. Well, if I understand the question, the university may submit a project 
seeking to get a better connection, or a group of students may get together, get organized, and uh, apply with a project. It's not necessary to be a legal person. They may get together, get organized, and uh, present one together. Does that respond to your question? Good. Thank you. Does anybody else want to ask a question? I think that there are no more. Thank you, Giovanna. Thank you, Laura. And uh, all those of you who sent questions, now it, we invite you for a 10-minute break and then uh, we'll resume. Welcome everyone again. I want to thank the more than 240 people that are connected to this session. Remember that you can ask questions in English, Spanish or Portuguese. Questions will be read both in the original language and in the speaker's language so that everyone, including the person asking the question, may understand. She's repeating the same message in English, Spanish or Portuguese. The questions will be read in both the original language and in that of the speaker, so that all participants, including the person who asked the questions, may understand it properly. We remind you that we are offering simultaneous uh, uh, transcription in three languages, Spanish, English, and Portuguese. To see the live transcription, you must go to the event website and look for the language uh, of your choice in the simultaneous transcription menu. She's repeating the same message. We will be providing simultaneous transcription of the presentations uh, in this session in three languages, Spanish, English and Portuguese. To see the live transcription, you must go to the event website and look for the language of your choice in the simultaneous transcription menu. Now, uh, we, we will leave some time for questions uh, and for brief comments after the presentations in this session. Please remember to do that in uh, the Q&A panel. We now invite um, the Executive Director of uh, LACNIC, Oscar Robles Garay, who will present uh, the annual report uh, 2019. Traditionally, we have presented this report in each uh, ordinary annual assembly to all the associates uh, to all the members of LACNIC. As you all know, the assembly has been uh, put off, but uh, we thought that it would be relevant to do this um, accounting accountability exercise, uh, both uh, for LACNIC members and all the members of the community interested in our activities. Thank you, Maka, and I want to thank everybody uh, who's following this. And before I go to my presentation, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, greet not only the LACNIC members, but all uh, our uh, friends of the community that uh, follow us and that uh, usually participate in our events. We will have a chance in the future to uh, be close to each other in future events that I'm sure we'll organize. For the time being, this week, we will continue to work for the internet um, uh, that uh, not only is our livelihood, but it has also shown uh, that it is an essential tool for the productive and effective activities in uh, these uh, special circumstances. So my greetings for all of you, hoping that you ha are in good health. So let's go to my presentation. Let me tell you that uh, at uh, the Members' Assembly, Although the Members' Assembly was put off, as was well mentioned by Maka, we didn't want uh, to leave uh, uh, um, this opportunity, to miss this opportunity to present uh, this uh, account of activities, um, this review of the topics and the efforts we make, not just for our members, but for the community that participates in our events. Some of them even in a partnership with some of the internet regional organizations. So without further ado, let me then uh, uh, give you this annual report. As Laura mentioned, these activities are defined by our strategic plan. And I'm going to tell you, uh, based on uh, the, our perspectives, 
that we established. First of all, the activities uh, targeting our clients, our members and all the community with a service approach uh, to these two large communities. Then I'm going to talk about the processes, the aspects of human capital, and finally, financial sustainability. So these are going to be the four perspectives and uh, with uh, a significant emphasis on uh, the uh, customers, the members, and the community. As you know, IPv4 resources uh, have uh, a depletion date that is getting closer and closer. We um, we will surely um, run out of uh, IPv4 space uh, before the end of the year. However, we continue to have a significant increase in the num in the amount of space assigned. In 2019, we assigned 8% more resources than during 2018. Likewise, during 2019, we recorded 18.5% more members than we had uh, um, in until last year. So we achie achieved uh, a number uh, slightly over 10,000 members uh, by the end of the year. Today we have over uh, 10,500 members. Obviously, uh, the uh, lower categories are the ones with more members. And there you can see in um, uh, lavender color, the lower category uh, down there in 2019 that starts to have a more significant number of members thanks to the changes uh, in uh, the policies but also in um, the uh, bylaws change that uh, made it possible to assign um, uh, memberships to those requiring a slash 24, something that in the past could not be done. Much of the growth was thanks to the small ISPs. During 2019, <coughs> LACNIC made great efforts to be able to participate in events of this community. We were fortunate that we met uh, many of them in some events this year. We had 10 events. There were going to be 11, but one of them was cancelled, the one in Bolivia, because of different circumstances. But even so, we could meet with many of them, more than uh, 4.5 thousand participants. Some of them were regional events, some of them uh, national or more local. And we took the information of the requirements to request uh, space and the benefits of being a LACNIC member. And uh, we saw that people were interested in being part uh, of uh, the membership uh, of uh, LACNIC and both Colombia and in Mexico, Ecuador and Argentina, we saw a significant increase in the number of members thanks to these categories. So uh, looking at this growth, we see this chart that uh, we thought it was interesting to show you. It shows the tendency in the growth of uh, some of the members in some countries, the changes in the slope um, indicate uh, some either favorable or unfavorable uh, situation for in some for some reasons. In Ecuador, for instance, we see uh, an interesting growth in the recent years. In Colombia, uh, last year we saw a significant increase. That was not the case in Chile, which showed a change uh, in the slope, but the other way around. Uh, the presentation will be available so that you can check it later in more detail. So as part of uh, the policies uh, that the community approves and uh, discusses at our community in our region, we have uh, the uh, intra-region transfers of resources. This is a report with of uh, 55 transactions that were performed of uh, intra-RIR transfers in the time that we have a 
implemented this policy, the so-called 2.3.2.18, and where there there have been more than 300,000 IPv4 addresses transferred. Much of the efforts are oriented to the services to our members, and this year we released, among other things, four services to our members, the most relevant of which is the Internet Routing Registry, IRR which is a new channel to define and express uh, routing policies. And with that, we can contribute to the security and stability of the Internet. We did that based uh, on the information in the RPKI. As we are the sources of that information, we believe that it is that this process is much more reliable. So this service was released uh, in late 2019, and today it is available to all the members that get connected through the administration console of Melaknik. Another service that we have in a beta phase, and in the near future we'll have it in a more stable phase, but today you can already use it, is a geolocation uh, service. It's a service that uh, can personally identify the geographic localization of your resources so that uh, contents providers may use it. Another service that we released last year was uh, the uh, API Miraknik so that some operators may manage um, these uh, resources massively, especially those that uh, have a significant amount of resources. We also released RPKI in the delegate mode. This complements um, the um, uh, availability of RPKI service. So Nick Brazil, for instance, could already offer the RPKI service to its community directly. And with that, the service of uh, RPKI or the RPKI tool is made available to all uh, LACNIC members, not just uh, the direct uh, clients of LACNIC, but also working directly with NIC Mexico and NIC Brazil. So, um, in our constant efforts with our members, much of the effort uh, is uh, geared to um, bring you closer, you the members, closer to our institutional life, not only to offer the services we have, but also we believe it's important for you to participate in uh, the statutory processes, such as the assembly that we conduct uh, each year. Last year, we had this assembly in uh, Punta Cana, and we had 158 members. It's a significant number, considering that usually there are more than 250 members per assembly assembly. Obviously, in addition to the assembly, we have uh, the statutory elections. These elections are for the Electoral Commission that had uh, six candidates for one vacancy, and uh, the person elected was Horacio Tedesco. The Fiscal Commission also had uh, elections. There were nine candidates for uh, one single vacancy, and uh, the person elected was Aristoteles Dantas. Horacio Tedesco is of Argentina, and Aristoteles Dantas is from Brazil. And finally, the third statutory election was for the board. There were 13 candidates to cover two vacancies. More than uh, 1,500 organizations voted. That is more than the 18% of other people who could vote, and uh, the uh, persons elected were Wardner Mayer from Brazil and Javier Salazar of Mexico. You may remember that we have a, a program of visits to members, so the idea there is to approach, uh, uh, in general, uh, uh, all the region, but especially emphasizing those cities where that find it difficult to participate in our events. And we seek to take them information about the relevance of being a member of LACNIC, all the services that we offer and that we release year after year. We explain the rights they have access to, and we also provide technical information about what is discussed uh, at our events. In 2019, we visited Belize, uh, Costa Rica, Curaçao, Ecuador, and Panama. This year, this was our plan, uh, but it will be difficult for us uh, to uh, fully 
um, uh, completed, but uh, we are going to do our best to approach some of the communities that we have not reached to. That's part of the members. On the other hand, we also have the part of the community, the rest of the community, those that not necessarily have resources and participate because they are interested in uh, having a stable, secure, and resilient internet that we also value broadly. We have an online training tool. It's a service that we call Campus LACNIC. Last year, we released three courses, the introduction to IPv6 in English, or what do we call basic IPv6. We uh, produce it in English. We also released uh, the course uh, of uh, introduction to uh, network management and an introductory course to network security. The three are self-managed. In uh, 2020, those of you who follow the LACNIC campus, you will see the course that we have released, uh, IPv6 and massive networks, and an introductory course on internet governance. In the near future, you'll be able to pick it uh, in um, the, among the courses of LACNIC campus, so pay attention to that uh, offer. Last year, we had a very important participation in the LACNIC campus, 6,764 people registered and almost 50% of them completed the course, which is uh, 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 quite a high level of completion for the standard. In 2018, we had uh, 4,400, so this is a very important increase in the participation of our courses for us, that's an essential tool because it's the only way we can have a sustainable training on technical aspects and other aspects that are not so technical. Not only that, but those courses, uh, people are very satisfied with them. You can see that in the charts with values over 92% of satisfaction and some even higher levels of satisfaction. And together with the formal training supply, we also have webinars that we organize selected to uh, topics that we believe will be important for all of you. We organize a webinar celebrating the 50th uh, anniversary of the internet, where we invited the founders, precisely some of the uh, so-called uh, fathers of the Internet, Steve Crocker, Charles Klein, and Leonard Kleinrocker, and uh, some other courses related to IPv6. And of course, we uh, and, and uh, of course, uh, other courses related to IPv6. And overall, we had about 3,000 participants in these webinars, and if we add them to the online courses, that means that there were about 10,000 participants in the region uh, that uh, used uh, our formal training and webinars. Likewise, we offer, we make significant efforts and we devote a lot of energy in you know, organizing our events, not only for our members, but also for our sister organizations in the region, for the rest of the technical community, to continue to build this community on a number of topics, not just technical, obviously, but also in the definition and the constructions of the policies and rules that uh, have to do with our services. We had a very good evaluation in both events, also with the participation over the target, and we are very proud to have this level of approval because obviously it makes it possible for us to identify the aspects you value, not just uh, uh, being a member, but also not only those of you who are members, but also those who attend our events. Seeing how uh, satisfied you are with the agenda, with the uh, event in general, um, that uh, you always uh, give a very high level of satisfaction. So to do um, these events, it's essential to uh, have a, a level of uh, 
uh, sponsorships um, and we had an increase not only in the number of entities that have sponsored but us but also in the amounts we receive that favor um, thanks to their funding. During 2019, we signed annual agreements with Amazon, D6, Telecom Managers, Netflix, and three biannual uh, agreements with Facebook, Adrex, and Nick Brazil. All of them are essential, as I said, to maintain the quality of these events that we organize. In uh, 2019, we concluded a multi-annual project that we had in Haiti with IDRC funds, where we see we sought to develop uh, digital skills in uh, Haiti about uh, uh, to um, uh, take employability to some part of the community and to strengthen the internet in that country. The project was successful. We uh, conducted a number of activities and we finally concluded it in December 2019. And a very important aspect is that this effort will... Uh, Transcend because it has been um, taken by other organizations such as Google, who are going to repeat this effort in some countries in Central America. As you know, we also implemented the Ford project, although um, in uh, this project we applied it jointly with NIC Mexico in uh, 2018. The significant uh, work um, uh, we we work significantly du during uh, 2019, and these are two big elements um, or two relevant elements for this project. On the one hand, we have the technical part uh, or technological part that is the validator that makes it possible to validate the um, BGP route information in the RPKI, but also we have the less technological part that is monitoring. Although you need this. Uh, Tool. Uh, this identified uh, this enables us to identify not just the technical part, but also some threats to the security in the internet routing. Not only are they technical uh, failures or aspects, but sometimes these are political situations. And having this monitoring capacity, in my view, is important. Part of our function is to promote the deployment of IPv6, although we are not responsible for that deployment, of the ultimate uh, persons responsible, we work uh, hard uh, to achieve um, this effective deployment, uh, uh, trying to uh, conduct a lot of training on this topic and uh, techni uh, providing technical information, but also strategic information to decision makers. We uh, are slightly underneath the global level. It's the the amount of traffic that circulates in IPv6 in the region is over 20%. Maybe in these two months it has moved a couple of uh, points. Um, if you look at the sources, these references that I show here, you may see that we achieved 23% in the region. But of course, this is because of uh, uh, the homework um, and uh, uh, working at home and because people are staying at home in many countries. But uh, we believe that um, this may uh, go back to 21% once activities get stabilized. The important thing is that there are more and more countries uh, that are making efforts, uh, more and more countries, more operators, more ISPs, universities, organizations, uh, conducting activities to deploy IPv6 in an effective manner. We have to be very careful because the averages are deceitful. There are countries very advanced in the amount of traffic of IPv6. There are uh, some countries that have a big lag in the deployment of IPv6, so we have to um, redouble these efforts. Part of the effort is not, not, is not just technical. We um, um, have to approach uh, the decision makers. Last year, we approached Bolivia and Paraguay to talk with different operators, including associations, IT chambers, aid, uh, government agencies, to establish the relevance of deploying IPv6. It shouldn't be seen as just a, a technological aspect, but as a strategic aspect for the development of the internet in these countries. Another effort we make for a better internet is um, um, 
the uh, installment of uh, root server nodes through the project mass raises. Throughout the years, we have uh, deployed um, uh, these nodes in the region. Although we are not uh, root server operators, the operators uh, seek us because of our capacity to identify reliable entities and entities where it may be relevant to place these nodes. Last year, we put uh, in uh, Suriname with uh, the operator Telesur in Bolivia, with Comteco in Guatemala, with Tigo, and in Mexico with Transdelco. If I'm not wrong, this was in Chihuahua. So far, uh, I described the efforts to the members and the community. Now, let me tell you a bit uh, more about uh, the more internal aspects of the processes that we have for an effective decision making. Um, three years ago, the administration area started uh, a project with the objective of uh, having reliable information systems for effective decision making. So we have generated these visualizations of different systems that we have, uh, several tools that we have for aspects of strategic processes, central core processes and support processes. This enables us to interconnect them through a visualizer, visualizer a tableau, and we may make decisions and visualize them, some sensitive aspects for our discussions. You may see, for instance, in the part of the strategic map, the part of uh, risk management, although they are uh, implemented with other uh, independent systems. Uh, this visualizer enables us to focus, uh, to concentrate them and to see the reports uh, very effectively and very timely. Here you can see some other visualizations uh, of the systems related with uh, the registry services or the policy development process and also some other support processes that may require significant efforts in LACNIC such as the travels of the staff uh, and the rest of the community. During 2019, we recertified uh, with the ISO 9001 standard. And this is important, very important because we have been certifying for several years. This not in itself makes it possible for us to do things well, but it's a tool for a continuous improvement to ident and to identify aspects uh, for improvement and obviously to make the processes repeatable. It's very important for us to follow all um, those uh, recommendations that appear year by year. And uh, this year, we had the, this uh, recertification with no uh, observations and no nonconformities. Next year, we are going to change the certifying uh, firm with uh, the so-called uh, LSQA. So the next uh, seal that we will have will be different. This is a seal that you can see in uh, our homepage. As part of the conclusion of uh, the remodeling of the, the House of the Internet, uh, the uh, LACNIC's offices, uh, we gave you a report in previous years, but thanks to that, uh, we uh, have a, mo a formal data center with more room, and we have been able to incorporate uh, Blades technology, as we show here in the slide. And this has enabled us to virtualize some services through this technology that is more efficient, it gives us more availability, and somehow we can provide many of the services uh, uh, available to the members and the rest of the community. Together with the financial aspect, uh, a key aspect uh, to uh, implement all these activities is the internal capital, the development of people. You have five minutes left. Thank you, Joe. Um, for several years, we have uh, paid special attention in the uh, development of this internal capital, the people that contribute to this effort. For the eighth consecutive year, LACNICO ranked uh, among the best um, places to work in Uruguay, but uh, we also got the best uh, general average in our evaluation, reaching 93. 
And not only is this、um, evolution historic, but it represents. The effort that we make in getting better, even when we are already at an excellent level, this makes it possible for us to continue to attract relevant talent, skilled talent to uh, um, complete uh, Lucknick's mission, but also to maintain our staff motivated and working.、Uh, On the on the projects that are important for you, here you have some demographic statistics of our staff. It's ten countries, including plus Uruguay,、uh, people、uh, from ten nationalities in our staff, and our staff also participates, works online. And it was thanks to that learning that we already had with the staff working online that has made it possible for us to have this. Work、uh, during the pandemic,、uh, to, it it's made it easier. It wasn't so complicated for us thanks to this、uh, learning that we had、uh, with our staff working online. You may see that the number of people working in Lucknick has remained quite stable, with a small increase that is projected for this year. The proportion of women is higher than. Uh, the number of men, fifty-six versus forty-three percent. Finally, the part of human capital we devoted this year an effort to define the organizational values of LACNIC. What, what is it that uh, makes us uh, uh, achieve our objectives? What、uh, makes us successful in co- the completion of our objectives? First of all, the commitment that we have to work for the community of the internet for our members. We feel proud of our mission and the impact that we have to、uh, for the transcendence of our work. Our contribution for the internet as a tool for the service of people. We are convinced that success is reached working as a team, and、uh, we have something to contribute. We Try to have continuous improvement. We make efforts to have better and better results each day, and we take care of our collaborators. And we are committed to the development. We promote、uh, working and personal life balance, and、um, to have a, de- a relaxed,、uh, positive, and healthy work. It's important uh, uh, that to consider that when recruiting. Not only as a part cultural part, but also as part of the objectives of Latnik. Finally, the financial sustainability that、uh, Diego Mena is going to present, as usual, in detail. And、uh, I just want to say that the audits that we conduct year after year to the NIRs, we、uh, do it step by step. Last year we did it in Mexico, and、uh, the result of the audit was also absolutely satisfactory. And this year we have to do it to Nick Brazil, and we are going to do it also step by step successively. Let me tell you a bit about our risk management methodology. We have identified 153 aspects that we attend annually, and after an assessment and evaluation, we have five risks that we monitor permanently. These are the ones that we report to the board, the risk committee,、uh, quarterly, to. Keep them、uh, attentive to everything that happens around Lucknick. As a summary, 2019 was a year with a lot of、uh, operational challenges and in our surroundings that have、uh, strengthened us. The formalization of the internal procedures and with the board, as、uh, Warner Meyer showed some minutes ago, has made it possible for us to resolve the challenges uh, uh, that we run into in. Uh, quite well. Again, we had an extra. We had extraordinary results in many aspects. At a satisfaction of the events that you saw, with values、uh, of ninety five percent, an excellent organizational climate, with a.、Uh, An assessment of ninety-three percent, our best historic value, and excellent financial numbers that make it possible for us、uh, to have a, a good position, especially with、uh, the situation that we're going through. So this is all.、Uh, I'm. This presentation will be available, and I'm ready to answer any questions that you may have. I thank you for your time, your attention, and I send you my virtual greetings to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. We'll leave、uh, the questions of this presentation for the next presentation.
Good morning everyone. I hope uh, you are well. Today I'm going to share the financial statement of the organization for 2019. First of all, and as a summary and reinforcing what Oscar said at the end of his presentation, I want to give you a couple of important messages. The first is that 2019 was a very good year, not only from the point of view of the execution of the budget, both in revenues and spending, but especially because of the execution of activities and the projects that we had planned. The second message is to reassure you that LACNIC's executive team has run the organization in a very responsible manner, as always, and this makes it possible for us to have a good financial strength. In these minutes, we are going to analyze, first, the current financial statement of the organization, that is, the assets, liability, and the equity, the state of results with the re revenues and operating spend and other non-operative results, the evolution of LACNIC's reserves, and finally, the external reports or opinions issued by the external auditors and the Fiscal Commission. Let me now share the presentation. Maka, could you tell me if you see it? Yes, Diego. I confirm we can see it. So let us start now with the analysis of the assets, which is nothing but the assets and the fees of the organization. It is arranged top down in accordance with their liquidity. In that respect, the first thing that we have is the cash and cash equivalent. The balance at the end of 2019 is greater than we had at the end of the previous year. In January 2020, we invested uh, in shares and securities, taking the amount uh, of the available funds to levels of liquidity appropriate for the operations of the organization under normal circumstances. The increase of investment responds to the use of uh, the year's positive results. The revenues related to memberships have increased and 75% of this increase corresponds to the increase in the National Internet Registries of Brazil, NIC Brazil and NIC Mexico, and the remaining 25% correspond to the activity of the LACNIC members. The fixed assets and intangibles had uh, an increase of $226,000 in one year. This increase corresponds to the net effect of, on the one hand, investments conducted throughout the year in remodeling the house of the internet and in the project of infrastructure of the new data center that uh, meant uh, $608,000. On the other hand, we have the annual depreciation of these assets reaching $380,000. Finally, in item E, we have uh, the funds managed by the organization on behalf uh, of third parties. LACNIC participates in partnership projects with other organizations of the Internet ecosystem, with the objective of promoting the development of the Internet in the region. To that end, LACNIC manages funds on behalf of third parties in relation with those projects. In addition, we act as secretariat for the preparation of the regional meeting of the Internet Governance Forum, LACNIC IGF, managing funds on behalf of the Programs Committee or the Organizing Committee. Now, let us analyze the liabilities and the equity. Liabilities are the obligations assumed by the organization. The most significant variation that we have here is the reduction of the commercial debts. This variation was basically due to the fact that at the end of 2018, we still had debts with suppliers involved in the reform of the House of the Internet and imports of equipment for the project of infrastructure for the new data center. These projects were completed in 2019. And on the other hand, the variation in the equity corresponds to the positive results of the fiscal year. Now, well, I'll walk you through the results. Uh, we're going to start with the operating revenue. W now you'll see uh, the makeup of this uh, revenue. We start with the revenue of ISPs, the Internet Service Providers. 2019 was the year where we saw the greatest increase in the number of new members. 
1,566 members. This increase was seen in both the national registries of Brazil and Mexico and those uh, of LACNIC. We continue with end users. In the end user sector, there was a significant increase at the end of 2019 as a result of uh, the resolution of one of the governments in the region that said uh, a deadline for the adoption of the IPv6 protocol by December 31st, 2019 for all its state agencies. And we end up with the ASNs, whose variation is also positive and accompanies the growth uh, of uh, the overall membership. Now, I walk you through the uh, variations in operating expenses for the year. We start with the fees and services contracted. While there was a 40% increase compared to the previous year, this percentage increase remains under the 9% uh, of the origin organization's total operating expenses as in the last three years. The increase in the depreciation of fixed assets and intangibles uh, originates in the increase in investments in fixed uh, assets made in 2019 and that we commented a while ago when we talked about uh, the assets. Basically, we invest the, the investments were made in the technological infrastructure of the house and some renovations that uh, were made in it. The travels of speakers and grants for participants were increased mainly because uh, the hotel of LACNIC 31 in Punta Cana was all-inclusive and therefore its cost was higher than the average of previous events. Uh, on the other hand, the costs of building maintenance services went down compared to 2018. This decrease in these expenses is basically due to the fact that in 2018, during the remodeling processes of the work of the house, we rented offices temporarily, which added to our expenses. Finally, information technology maintenance costs increased as a result of higher costs in the licensing scheme as we updated the data center technology. We close with the analysis of the results uh, for this year, reviewing the non-operational results, financial results. As to the financial results, the financial results for investments have uh, been the most uh, the, the ones that had the greatest variations. These results are basically composed of the interest earned and the result of the positive or negative variation of uh, the market stocks of the secu or the securities that we have in our investment portfolio. The total positive variation for the year, $128,000 compared to the previous year. $30,000 correspond to higher interest internet, uh, earned because of the increase in the investment portfolio, while the remaining 100000 corresponds to positive variation in market values. In 2018, we had a drop in market values, while in 2019, there was an increase in uh, those market values. In 2018, we had a loss of $54,000, while in 2019, we had an increase of $44,000. So there you have the $100,000 variation. So why is it so important for an organization like LACNIC to have reserves? Faced with the different economic conditions and changes that may impact the environment, they're good first to ensure the financial sustainability of LACNIC in the short and long term, and on the other hand, to contribute with the organization's ability to carry out its mission on an ongoing basis, uninterruptedly. To this end, the LACNIC board asked us to define uh, this uh, uh, asked uh, the board uh, to define and regularly monitor it on a quarterly basis, as Maya commented in his presentation. There are two types of reserves, each with a different nature and scope. On the one hand, the operational reserve ensures liquidity in the short term, and on the other hand, the equity reserve guarantees solvency in the medium and long term. Here you can see a chart with the closing values for 2019 and the parameters defined for the reserve policy where we have set a minimum value, a maximum value, and a benchmark. At the end of 2019, we had a reserve ratio of 13.4 months of operating expenses. The the operational reserve and uh, as to the equity reserve it would stretch for 21.4 months 
On your right, you can see a chart with a historical evolution of both reserves over the last three years. Having completed the analysis of our financial statements at the end of 2019, we now move on to share two reports issued by fully independent entities. One is uh, the external auditors, Deloitte, and then Later, we'll see the internal report issued by the members of the Fiscal Commission. The result of Deloitte's independent audit report is a favorable report. It's a clean report with unqualified opinions. I now turn to the most important paragraph, that of the opinion. We have audited the financial statements of the Internet Address Registry for Latin America and the Caribbean, LACNIC, expressed in U.S. dollars, including the financial statement as of December 31, 2019, and the corresponding comprehensive results, statements of changes in the net worth of cash flows for the year ended on that date, and notes to the financial statements that include a summary of the significant accounting policies. In our view, the attached uh, financial statements reasonably present, in all their significant aspects, the financial situation of the Internet Address Registry for Latin America and the Caribbean, LACNIC, as of December 31, 2019. The comprehensive results of their operations and their cash flows for the financial year ended on that date in accordance with the proper accounting standards in Uruguay. Finally, we share the report issued by the members of the Fiscal Commission. It is also a favorable report, and I turn to read the most important paragraph, that of conclusions. First, the audit of the, the, audit of the accounting statement for the year ended uh, December 31st, 2019 by Deloitte as an independent auditor was revised. The outcome of that audit has been favorable, and um, the financial statements concerned reasonably present the financial situation of LACNIC as of this. 30, December 31st, 2019, in all its significant aspects. Second, stemming from the analysis made by the Fiscal Commission of the report of the independent auditor and the documentation submitted by or requested uh, to LACNIC, we conclude that the data submitted reasonably reflect the financial situation of LACNIC as of December 31st, 2019, so we advise its approval by the General Assembly in accordance with the, stat the bylaws of LACNIC. Here we finish the report we wanted to share. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Diego, for your presentation. Since there are some comments and questions, we now give the floor to Giovanna, who will redirect the questions to the speakers. Thank you very much, Maka. The first question comes from M. Gonzalez and refers to Oscar's first presentation. The question is, do I need to be a LACNIC member if I am an SME or a cooperative? Thank you, Diego. Definitely, it's not mandatory. However, if your business, if your service is to bring connectivity to your customers and you are an SME or you are a cooperative, then my recommendation is that uh, you do approach us so we can talk about the services you would receive as a member of LACNIC because there, there is not just the direct benefit of obtaining the numeric resources directly from LACNIC without having to depend on your provider, but there are also other associated benefits such as training, such as the events in which we participate uh, to help you get closer to organizations similar to yours and where you can get other benefits. Therefore, in a nutshell, it's not, a ma it's not mandatory, but if you give connectivity to your customers, it is highly recommended. Thank you very much, Oscar. The second question is also for you. Eric Vega asks whether there are any new plans for the Central American region to continue to drive its participation and growth. Uh, has it, uh, have the events in Costa Rica and Panama worked? We do not have any specific events uh, for Central America, but we are continuously working jointly with organizations in the region to which we bring not only technical information, but we provide information related to the deployment of IPv6, the risks of blockages, for example. 
with organizations like Comtelka, with which we participate directly as a sectoral member. So we are working very closely with those communities. And last year, we were there with our, part, with our members in Panama and Costa Rica, as you well pointed out. The events are very fruitful because it's a way we can get closer to members who may not come to our annual events and uh, we take them relevant information so they can uh, take advantage of everything from the deployment of technologies to information that can help them as they offer the services. Thank you. Thank you very much, Oscar. The next question is financial in nature, and it is from Man Mr. Samuel Santos Ramos, and it goes like this. Good morning. I have a question. What has been the impact and how much impact has COVID-19 had? Have you estimated that? Thank you. Let me answer on Diego's behalf, too. To date, we have not seen any significant impact. The board has asked us to monitor this potential impact. And we started last month. Actually, since early April, we have been monitoring the financial impact, listening to members when they can't pay, and especially to learn of any actions we can adopt. To date, we have not had a significant impact. We know that we are going to have an impact. You may just recall that there is a lag. There's a delay. Uh, there's a process whereby members have up to three months to pay after maturity, and that is when we realize that indeed a member was unable to pay. At least for the time being, we do not have anything significant, but we know that we will have it, and that is why we are closely monitoring the development of arrears, payment delays, comparing the situation with that of other months. Thank you. The next question is for Oscar, too. It comes from William M. What types of members should universities be? What kind of members should universities be? We have only one type of member from a practical point of view. It's whoever receives resources. So what determines the members cat category is the amount of space you receive. However, today, because of the limitation of IPv4, we are only assigning 250 to 1,000 addresses depending on their needs. So, if the university already has resources allocated by LACNIC, you can't uh, request any more space. If you're already a LACNIC member, it, it is obviously under that structure depending on the amount of space you have received in the past. There is a classification ranging from nano to extra large, depending on the amount of space. But basically, everyone receives the same services, regardless of that category. Thanks a lot. Another question by Mr. Edwin Salazar. Good morning. My question is whether the number of requirements to be a LACNIC member has been reduced because of COVID-19. No, we don't have any reductions in terms of requirements. Basically, the requirements are set out in our policies. And uh, these obviously depend on you, the community who determine those requirements. To date, we have not heard of any members or applicants reporting any difficulties because of, of the pandemics. As soon as we have any news and information about it, of course, we'd try to share it with the community so that this can be solved. But so far, we haven't found anything about it. 
Thank you very much, Oscar. The next question is by Eduardo Preve. Oscar mentioned that this year there would be a depletion of IPv4 space at LACNIC. Is there an estimated date? Yes, we have an estimated date. In fact, if you want to check the specific date that we move uh, periodically, we have it in our homepage. There we have a small link to that piece of information. And today we estimate that it would be around July, August, depending on how nervous the applicants get. But that is the point, that this date has not been delayed yet, not even with the pandemic. I would dare say that it goes even faster than we had esteemed. It may be the case that members are having a much greater need for growth of IP addresses or those that request uh, the addresses because this is for new um, members. Or it may be um, that uh, because of the fact that this date is very close, we are two or three months away from reaching that date. So this may have motivated many of those who had this pending request to come forward and, and encourage them to do so. Thank you very much, Oscar. We have one more question related to the IPv4 addresses. It comes from Lorena Vicente, who wants to know how a university can request IPv4 addresses. The way to request, you should request it is through the LACNIC website. If you are in Mexico or Brazil, you can do it directly with your appropriate NIC, in this case, NIC Mexico or NIC Brazil. If you are outside those two countries, then you should do it directly with us at www.lacnic.net in the services section. There you can start the processes, whether you are a technical school or uh, as an end user, or if you are an access provider, you should request it as a service provider. The requirements is, are that you should need the space. And that you and you should need the minimum necessary established by the LACNIC policy, which, if I'm not wrong, is 25% uh, of a slash 24. That is approximately 60 addresses. If I'm wrong, please correct me. Hello. We're getting a few more questions, some of them not directly related to the presentations. So we ask you to please send those to membresia at lacnic.net. Now we'll leave the address in the chat box, membresia at lacnic.net. So this would be all, Macarena. Thank you, Giovanna. Thank you all for the questions and comments. We now close the briefing uh, for the LACNIC members and community. We reached more than 265 participants. We inform you that the presentations are already posted on the website of the event.